and welcome to the Best Girl Speaks. Today is Monday, February 11th, and this is episode 51. How are you? Mm-hmm. 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 Oh. Well, we're doing fine, too. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're a new viewer, hello. Thanks for trying it out. If you're a returning viewer, oh my gosh, thank you. That's right, I'm talking to you. I have other thank yous this week. Thank you, Diane. Diane donated to real life. Hard earned money. Fuck you. Yay, Diane! Thanks, Diane. Um. There are no shenanigans. Yes, we have no shenanigans. We have no shenanigans today. It's true, people. My shenanigans are totally lacking. Such a, such a vital part of this show. And since I feel like you probably don't want to hear about my trip to Sam's Club to get glasses for my husband and child. Because <laughs> why would you? <laughs> I've decided to introduce a new segment. It's called It Blew My Mind. Tentatively. <laughs> I mean, it's called that tentatively. Not it blew my mind tentatively. It blew my mind. It's shenanigans of the mental variety. Because sometimes I don't have physical outer worldly shenanigans. So I feel like I need to create a vehicle for which to shenanigan it. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, so I feel like I need to have like some sort of structured way to tell you about my mental shenanigans. Or at least one funny thing. So yay! We're doing it. Let's try. Tell me what you think. Unless it's mean, then shush. <laughs> so this week's It Blew My Mind shenanigan is from this book. It's called Baking in America and it is by Greg Patent. This is an older book. I, I don't know. It's not ancient or anything, but it is in fact older. I'm sure there's a Library of Congress information in here somewhere, which will tell me the copyright date. That's 2002. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's about 10 years old. Can you believe? Oh, 11 years old, baby. That seems like it was yesterday, right? Right. Okay, that was not what blew my mind. <laughs> But this is what blew my mind. Okay, this, for one thing, this is a very nice cookbook. It's very lovely. Um, I'm not doing a full review. Shush. It's like 540-ish pages, of, and it has lots of great different things. But the best part about this book is it has awesome anecdotal information. It's great for blowing your mind. So it has lots of historical anecdotal information, which is fascinating. It's like a history dose. It's like a history lesson. Itty bitty doses. But this is my favorite in the book. This is highlighting a cook, an ad that was made in a, snoo, a new snowdrift cookbook in 1920. Okay. So this is it right there. It's a health claim. And I wish they had a picture of the actual ad. Now it was actually, it was like a cookbook. It was a promotional cookbook. And snowdrift, if you don't know, is an older lard company, which I don't know that exists because I don't know. Does that exist still? I mean, lard still exists, but I don't know if snowdrift does. I have not bought lard in the store for a while. Or ever. It's not that I'm anti-lord. But anyway. <laughs> oh no! Snowdrift was a pure vegetable oil. I'm sorry. I've gotten my facts confused. I apologize, Snowdrift people. But this is what's awesome about this ad that's in their promotional cookbook. They have a calories per pound breakdown of different foods. You'll see Snowdrift is right up there at the top with 4,050 calories per pound. Okay, oleo margarine is only got 3,500. Oleo, pff. and it goes all the way down to vegetables, <laughs> 229 calories a pound. But what's awesome about this is the perspective. Okay, the perspective in 1920 was not like, oh, I should eat a pound of vegetables because it has only 229 calories. No, no. The perspective was instead, snowdrift is your best calorie value. Bam! In less than a hundred years, our entire marketing scheme and our 
whole concept of food, let's not even pretend that's not part of it, has changed from how can I maximize my caloric to dollar value? Complete 180. I will happily pay 140% more for something that has less calories. In fact, if you can make it with no calories, I'll pay you double. Isn't that fascinating? Does that blow your mind? It totally blew my mind. It's still us just thinking about right now. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's not cool that we're in a society of such insane wealth <laughs> that we're actually paying more for less like that. That blows your mind, maybe not in the best way. <laughs> But it's just awesome to think about. Right? So did it blow your mind? A little bit, maybe? Just a little bit? Discuss. Ravelry boards are right there. They were, I mean, in the ether, not right in my hand. That would be awesome. So that's what blew my mind this week, amongst other things. I'll tell you more about them other times. Okay. Okay. So let's get on to the knitting. First, let's talk about cow. What, what? You say yes, huh? I say. There's totally a seedling drinks cow. Some of you bought the pattern. Thank you. Some of you were knitting. Extra thank yous. There's cow threads open. There'll be prizes. I'm going to get another one. Guess what I'm going to knit with? Ha ha, that. Now, this is not tricky. This is not one skein. This is actually, well, it is tricky. I guess that would be the opposite. It is tricky. This is actually two skeins of my experimental dyeing. But I think it's make a perfect seedling drains. Because anything will. So that's going to be mine. Are you going to make one? You totally should. It's super easy. And guess what? I made you some prizes. This is evidently the whole episode of me yelling at you. <laughs> but it's in a good way. So your first prize. Not in any order of goodness. On top of this is the order in which you're receiving it. It's an itty bitty purple. So I scrounged and scrounged and scrounged. I found you an itty bitty bit to make you a little bird bag. The bird bag doesn't have birds on it. The front birds are not ideally placed, but I had this much fabric. <laughs> but it's zippery and linedy and happily. It'll easily fit a small shawl project or a hat that might use two colors of yarn. It's the bird bag. The phone's ringing. Sorry, totally not gonna answer it. Nobody ever calls except every once in a while. Second prize! It's my husband. Second prize! It's a new shaped bag, which I'm going to make a few of and sell. Not this fabric. Because this is the only fabric I have of this fabric. But inside polka dots. Outside nest of flowers. Zipper tastic with a handle. So if you like to knit at the park in the springtime, you're ready to go. You can put your little keys on there if you want. That's right. Put your keys on there. That's fine. You can snap it on there. And you're ready to go. So this is like a, this is as wide as my sweater bags, but deeper. I mean, <laughs> the opposite of deeper. It's more shallow. Oh, it's so shallow. So yes, you can fit. It's still got a big old bottom. Okay. I'm a fan of the big bottoms. So you got a big old bottom, so you can put lots and lots and lots of yarn in there if you want to. But it's lower profile, so it won't take as much room up. Okay. So you can win one of those two project bags. Shh. Only if you complete a seedling dreams hat by the second podcast of March. I think that was the 11th. Oh my gosh, this is episode 51, which means next week is episode 52, but it's not technically my potiversary. I'm not planning on doing anything fancy. Sorry, this. <laughs> Let me zoom back a little bit. My face is like right here. You're like, dude, I see blemishes. Shush. Is that better? That's better, right? Okay. Um, oh, so I'm not doing any shenanigans, I don't think, for the anniversary. Just crap it up on me. But I will be like, yay, we made it here! And that's happening. The actual first release date of the first episode was March 1st. I should totally go back and look at it. Oh my god, no. It would be funny, though. Oh, I'm totally going to do it. Okay. On March 1st, I am going to view the first episode again to see what in the world I was doing. I'm sure it's no less crazy, no more crazy than it is now. Okay. Okay. Sorry. My hair is totally bonko. I have not showered yet. Sorry. Hats, my friend. Slippery. Sarah Dupuy. Yay. Yarn by Marigold Jen. She's awesome sauce. Um, 
Oh, so the actual real proud anniversary is March is yes, March first, and I won't be recording that day because it's a Friday. Um, but I will record the next time, and that'll be like the official one year done chunk. That'll be awesome. So actual real life knitting. First finished object I'm wearing and you can't see it. I know that's useless to you, but I can't do a clever stand up and dance shot because the angle's too tight and so you just get my rack. <laughs> and I need viewers, but not that badly. Hmm. <laughs> but this is my wall pole. It's my Hannah Fettig. It's from Brooklyn Tweed and it's knit out of Beaverside Dry Goods 2 ply sock in the Swift Fox colorway on US 2s and 3s sometimes just for funsies. I did steak this sweater. It's the only thing different. I made it a little shorter. Thank goodness. I made mine three inches shorter. I'm 5'8 and have a very long waist. Like, it is hard for me to buy shirts that are not, hey, muffin top, what's up? You know what I mean? So I'm very long waisted. Like, I can technically wear a petite jean in 5'8. Stop it. <laughs> But I'm so I'm very long waisted, blah 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 blah. Oh, I made the sweater three inches shorter than was indicated. It is still below my butt. So thank goodness I didn't make it any longer. It would have been ridiculous. <laughs> the other thing I did differently is that I did not do the sh I did not do the super straight, super baggy sleeve. Um I started with 80% of the total sleeve count that I was supposed to have. Well, not up here here because it's raggly. I started with 80% and I think that was a wise decision because <laughs> it would have been very, which is not what I was going for. I mean, this sweater is like one of those unstructured, no fastenings, blows in the wind kind of sweaters. It is a wrap them up cozy evening. And that's really what I wanted it for. I wanted it as like a house sweater because I love the aesthetic of the unfastenable sweaters. I don't really enjoy wearing them in public because it's always flapping everywhere on me. I have a bag, the bag jacks it up and it's all cronky. And so I don't, for my physical, I think because I'm so curvy, maybe there's less, there's more stuff for it to get hung up on or something. <laughs> But they don't really work for me as well in practical applications. However, it is a perfect house sweater because it's a light enough weight that it's warm. Beaver Slide Dry Goods is a very lightweight yarn. And I don't mean, how do I say that? It's not lightweight like sport is really fingering. That's not what I mean. It is a very, it's a woolen spun yarn. And it's very lofty. I wonder why Brooklyn Tweet and Coffee's yarn that. Okay. Okay. It's a very lofty yarn. So for example, four ounces of their two ply sock which is technically a sport it's like 460 yards I think it's crazy so it's a very flurfity yarn so it's perfect it's like a perfect layer I can put it on over something like over a long sleeve shirt and I don't feel too warm but is that what I want to say I don't feel too warm I don't feel too it's just right it's just right because I like worsted weight sweaters for speed. <laughs> so sexy that way, right? Right? But I really don't wear them as often, <laughs> especially around the house, because we do keep our house relatively cool, like by some people's comparisons, meaning that whenever my friends come over, they're always like, do you have an extra sweater? I'm like, <laughs> it's not like the prairie in here. Come on, man up, woman up. But, but, um, so anyway, so we do keep our house relatively cold, but not freezing cold. So it's, you know, worsted weight too warm. Sport weight, perfect. So yay. It's probably not a sweater I'll wear out that often. Just because, again, it's very long and it has no fastenings. But I knew that going into it. And what I wanted it for was a house sweater. That's what it is. I did the steaking. One of the other things I did, once I did the steaking, I did an applied I cord. You see my terrible finishing job. I really did do a very bad finishing job on this one. You want to hear my story? Yeah. 
I decided that I should stick this on the sewing machine. Like that I should do the batten down the hatches stitches on the sewing machine. Nay, nay. <laughs> I thought that my newfound peace with the sewing machine and with all my sewing endeavors. This was not a good idea. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> what would have been a good idea is, you know, if I had been an, not an idiot. I mean, I knew going into it that I was probably going to fail. Isn't that funny? Like, this sweater took me a billion years to make. It's like a gajillion yards, etc., etc. And I'm like, ah! Psh, tutorial, tutorial. I'll just wing it. <laughs> so I knew when I put it on the sewing machine, there was probably a high likelihood that I would mess it up. And I did. Okay. <laughs> but, again, that's the beauty of knowing, right, going into it, that you're probably just going to use it as a house sweater. It takes a little bit of the pressure off. <laughs> So I did do the, you know, I went up one down on the other side with the sewing machine and I snipped it open. And it just, it does, it's, I mean, it's very secure. So that practical application, check. Aesthetic application, fail. And that's what it is. So I actually went back and did a, I took a lace weight and did a single crochet just in case. And also to try to hide the messed up stitchery because it's messed up. Again, it's a house sweater, it doesn't matter. When I'm doing a crochet uh, reinforcement for a steak, I actually don't really like the crochet. You have to be very careful with it because if you crochet in the same gauge yarn, well, if I do the single crochet in the same gauge yarn that I knit the sweater with, the crochet may, is, is t the gauge of it is too big. So it stretches out the edge of my sweater like nobody's business. So what I did on this one, this is a sport weight sweater. I actually did the crochet on in lace weight. Okay. Now to the I cord. <laughs> Cause I was like kind of oscillating about how I was going to do the finishing on this. I didn't know if I was like, okay, am I going to add an extra placket, like a vertical, like a vertically knit placket that you just match or stitch around. Cause again, the pattern is written flat and you don't need that, but the pattern is written with an I cord edge. So I decided, I would just do the I cord and I'm, I'm pleased with the result. It just looks, it hasn't been blocked since I did that, but I blocked it before I did that. But so it's just a nice, neat little edge. Um, it did help in one instance, the majority of the I cord, I do four for five. So I pick up four of every five stitches. Everybody's gauge is different. So that may not work for you, but that's what works for me. But when I did the neck, the neck is much more open. Like you could definitely wear it lower on your shoulder like that. So the neck has a tendency to want to kind of flare up a little bit. So on that, on the I cord from the first part of the raglan around to the other first part of the raglan, I did a three for four. So it tightened it up a little bit. So it lays a little bit flatter now. Right? So much information you didn't need to know. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So hopefully that's helpful if you're doing something similar. Is anybody taking that squirrel class? There's a squirrel knitting class on Craftsy. I'm sorry, I'm drinking. I have a little bit of a winter head. <laughs> so there's, I can't remember who the woman is who's teaching it. Bad person. Um, but she's doing a uh, sweater in the round and it has squirrels on the yoke. So many of your darling faces were like, oh my gosh, look at this super appreciate super love I'm totally not making that sweater <laughs> I do not need squirrels dancing around my my business <laughs> I'm sure it looks so cute on everybody but while I am like super zany for this 30 minutes a week I'm not always this <laughs> I mean I'm always this in my heart but my outward appearance is not always this. So y'all's faces are cute. Okay. I hope everybody takes that class because I want to see a flash mob of squirrel sweaters. Awesome. <laughs> okay, if there's a flash mob, I could be convinced to knit one. That's all I'm saying. Flash mob it up. <laughs> Finished object number two. These were actually done last week. I didn't wear them or block them or anything. <laughs> These are the... Sh these are a sock pattern. It's called like Shirtukaval. That's what it's called now. Okay. 
And it is a free pattern on Ravelry. Play the Jeopardy music right now. Sure to golf. Sure to golf. And it is by Alice Yu. So here, I'll turn this way better. So there it is. I love that yarn, by the way. Such good colors. So my made mine with um, Punky, another crafty girl, her strong sock, which is just like a high twist merino nylon sock. And this is her Prince of the Cosmos colorway. This took me forever to make, but it wasn't the pattern or the yarn. Just me. <laughs> afterthought heel. The pattern is not written for an afterthought heel, but I dig it. Okay. And it's Paul, uh, Paula. Paula of Knitting Pipeline fame. And of her own fame of awesomeness. Well, it's just had a thing about how she got a little hole in one of her heels. In one of her afterthought heel socks. And she had the brilliant realization or statementization. <laughs> statementization. After that, heel sock so easy to repair. It's like a modular sock. How genius is that? I didn't even think about that as one of the benefits. So, like, if you get a big old hole in here, and you're like, ah, I can just rip that bad boy out, knit a new heel, and it only take a few seconds. Or you get, you know, if your hole is here, you just rip it out to there, and then, or if your hole's down here, they'd be like, oh, now I have to get in a purple heel. You know what I mean? <sighs> So yeah, I there are two. I'm just holding one. I got two feet. Um, that's all I got to say about that. Love it. Score. Win, win, win. I think that's all. Of, yes, that's definitely all the finished objects. I'll save that till next time. Oh my gosh, I'm already 21 minutes. Shut up. Me, not you. Um. Okay, so I'll do spinning in the middle. I am spinning on the Spun Monkey. She has an Etsy and a big cartel site. I'll try to remember to link them both. She's very fancy that way. This is her 100% organic Polworth. It was four and a such ounces. That's in the crab on its back colorway, which is a Van Gogh painting. Here it is, flurfy style. And I have one bobbin done, so I have two point ish. Oh, this is four plus ounces. So I have half of it here uh, completed. There's a bit more on my wheel, but. Love it. Totally love it. That's all there is to say. It's beautifully fluffy and wonderful. I love the colors. I color faces. I love you. Genius, right? I mean, again, she's based it on a Van Gogh painting, so you can't go wrong. But the genius is that she thought of it. So, this I've never seen this specific one done as a colorway. Love it. Beautiful orangey brown to blacky with like a tealishy group to a more greenish teal to a light blue oh, it's beautiful. anyway there's that okay more works in progress oh i'll show you this i showed you this last week this is my lauren shawl by the the beautiful um shetland trader and her name I can never say, but I think it's Gudrun, Gudrun Johnston. There's nothing in there. Okay. You can see all that. So there it is. It is a lace weight shawl. It is a paper pattern. It's a very well written, written pattern. It is charted. It is not written. I mean, you know what I mean? There's charted instructions, but not written instructions. And it requires, I think 650 yards of lace weight. So it's a really good you know, it's not like the, oh, 1,400 yards of commitment for a shawl. It's triangular shaped. There you go. I am truncating mine a little bit. See how she has this fun, like, eyeball pattern here? That's not really what it is, but you know what I mean. The circle pattern. And then there's, like, a band, and then a little bit more eyeball pattern, and then a band. I'm leaving out the band, the thicker band, and the eyeball pattern. I'm done. <laughs> I got a big old applied edging to do. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, this is for my mother, and I know she doesn't want, she's a big lady like me, but she's not going to wear this like as an over the shoulder shawl. She's going to wear it more like it's modeled there, just as a wrap around. And, and so that only needs to be so big or it becomes cumbersome. And it's, this is my other confession. <laughs> I told my mom not to watch this one. I'll tell her this anyway. It's like I'm trying to trick her. She knows how to knit, she'll notice. I've not been really good about this one. There are totally errors in this. 
I was not motivated enough to care. <laughs> Because this is a variegated yarn. It's classic elite, silky alpaca lace, midnight forest colorway. It's very pretty, but it's very variegated. And that pattern, <clears throat> I still think it works, but knowing that my mother's gonna wear it scrunched up, it's not gonna be all beautifully fanned out like it is there on the lovely Shetland Trader. Knowing that she's gonna wear it scrunched up, I know I had two weeks to finish ish. Not that she's gonna like have a deadline on me, but you know what I mean. I messed up some stuff. Just kept going. <laughs> it's lace both directions, like it's yarn overs both directions. And we all know if you put lifelines on, but I'm just, it seemed silly to put a lifeline in for this small pattern because it's not that many stitches of big and yada, yada, yada. There's errors. <laughs> but I just finished with this funky part. There's nothing solid for me to put it against. And it's definitely not black. But you can see there's a little, see? Little, there's a little hole in there. It's a pretty groovy little pattern. And I just, it's not, it's not complicated at all. It's um, it's just four rows. It's not a wide stitch pattern. It's not complicated. I just, you know, I just, I wasn't feeling it. I gotta be honest. It's cool looking. I think if I had made it in a solid, I would have been, or a, a more of a woolen spun laced weight, I think I would have liked it. Like if it had slightly more, less going on color wise and more going on texture wise, I would have been more committed to the project. But I can't, it's, just, it's lost in the, so there you go. I'm trying to figure out where the middle ish is. So it's, it's, still, it's, it's pretty big. And I still have that applied edging. So, yeah. Confessions. <laughs> and it's not just because it's for somebody else. If I would have been making this for myself, I would have felt the same way. Nobody's ever going to see the errors. Well, they might. If they, like, spy. Like, if you you stretch it out, you could totally see some of them. Like, even if you're not a knitter, you'd be like. But. It gets scrunched up anyway. It's like. Now I feel like a really bad person for admitting that. Whatever. My next work in progress. <clears throat> I don't know if you know this. Laura Linneman of Knit Girls fame, and of course of La La Designs fame, because now she's famous in her own right, individually style. She is doing a mystery sock. It's called the Rock Study Mystery Sock. And she's doing it along with, or in conjunction with, the Solid Socks group on Ravelry. I'm not a member of the Solid Socks group, but I love Laura's face, so I'm making one too. <laughs> So there's no picture because it's a mystery. So if you're knitting it, you can probably still look because I have this much of, of anything that's information to you. And it's free. Get up on the train, people. Okay. So <clears throat> in further dyeing experiments, bam. Woo! I see the world through woolly colored glasses and I'm happy. Um, this is some high twist. 100% no. High twist 80% BFL 20% nylon fingering weight sock yarn by moi. There's going to be some of it for you soon. I got things hatching. You're probably like, dude, we so don't care. <laughs> I'm excited about shush. But this is one of the skeins that I dyed and it had a mistake in it. So I was like, well, yay, I have an excuse to knit with that. It had a little bit of a splatter in it, so you, you can't see it. Right, right there. There's like one little tiny dark stitch. But anyway, and I'm doing it two at a time. What, what? Now it looks crazy right now. You're like, because I was just about to say, and it's going so well, it's not tangled up at all. It's because I just took them out of the, the product bag all willy nilly, because I was all concentrating on you and your entertainment. <sighs> Usually, this is not an issue. <laughs> but anyway, so it's ribbing, twisted -y. It's free, so I can tell you this. It's twisted one by one ribbing, and then you get some cabling on either side that kind of just it goes across the. It's like two different cables on either side of the. Yeah, the side. But they work in conjunction with one another. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> 
Hopefully it made sense, but it'll be on the side. And please don't look at mine and be like, that doesn't look right. Cause I did make an error. And guess what? Don't care. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, it's very pretty little twisted stitch pattern, which I'm digging. So yay. Very stretchy. Oh, you want to see something else crazy I did, which is kind of fun. I mean, it's, it's completely, you know, it's completely wrong, but it could be an element on something else. Um, I actually, so you knit, you twist the stitches as you knit across. Well, I made a mistake, so I had to go back. Well, I just wasn't thinking. We were watching Stargate. The alien horde was attacking. I was involved. So when I knit back, I didn't, I didn't just knit the stitches because they were already twisted. Do you know what I mean? Like once they're twisted and then you, you tink back, they, they're twisted on that left needle now. So unless you just knit them without twisting them, they're get double twisted. So I, okay. So I knit them through the back loop again. So they got a double twist and it's kind of cool. It makes like a super awesome, like super ridgy ridge. You can really see it, right? Isn't that cool? It's a mistake. Don't care. <laughs> not like I don't care, but it's not important. It's, it's a sock and it's going to be in my pants. Not that many people looking in my pants. <laughs> so anyway, and oh, so I was so excited about the... I don't ever, ever knit socks two at a time. Like, I just don't. But I thought it would be kind of fun with the mystery cow. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I should just try it again. So what I'm doing different, you'll see, I, I have done it before with just one ball of yarn. I know there's all those tricks where you can, like, put the thing in a bag and then it just does not work for me. Okay. So I did two balls. But I think this is the secret to why it's working for me this time. Remember this little project bag I made a long time ago when I needed to be excited about Christmas knitting? This project bag, while it was the first one I had made like this, it works really well for this. The snappy tape, and I know, I don't think many people are doing the snappy tape. I'll make some for the shop. It's not a shop yet. <laughs> I am gonna make some. But in the meantime, or, or afterwards, how do you say this? Java Jenny, and I apologize, I think her, I think her shop name is like Kitchen Sink Creations. She does the snappy tape bags, but it works really well for the two at a time socks because the snap, the, the tap, the tape works. You can just pull your yarn out of it and it, the two balls will stay distinct. They don't roll around in there. I mean, I guess if you shook it like a crazy person, they would, but you can just pull and so it doesn't get stuck on a zipper or anything like that but it's not like a, an open top drawstring bag where they get twisted around each other they just stay in there and chill play nice together who knew that was a trick it's totally a trick you got it now so i give it to you so yes i think her and i apologize java jenny i love your face i think her shop is called kitchen sink kitchen sink creations and i am going to do my very best to remember to link it in the show notes if i don't somebody slap my face mentally and also with a comment somewhere that I can be like, oh, crap. I didn't even have a pen. I can't even pretend to write it down. Anyway. Okay. So that's all the stuff. Which is a good thing. Cause we're already three or four minutes. In. Um, okay. Now I got stuff to show you. This is not shameless self-promotion. There's no shameless self-promotion this week, except the teaser self-promotion, which I just showed you of my earring. Which might you be saying next week? No, no, I'm just saying. Anyway. Um, this is Pretty Pretty Princesses of Fiber. It's the unicorn tail section. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I bought some stuff. You want to look? That's what it's really called. This is from Diabolical. You can't. That's the colorway right there. It begins with the TH. Not even pretend I'm going to say that. She's obviously a genius face. And let me also discuss about her. Not only does she have beautiful colors, her colors are super my style, like very intense saturation. I love a super, super saturated stuff. Um, oh, but I didn't realize she was having a 15% off. She totally, she, and my, by the way, my uh, Etsy username is not the fat squirrel. It's something completely different. Not because I'm trying to be anonymous or anything. It's just because I had my Etsy account before I was the fat squirrel. So she did. She didn't do this with any hope of like 
promotion or anything. She just emailed me. She's like, oh, I didn't, you know, I was having a 15% off sale. You probably didn't know it. I just went ahead and refunded you the difference. How awesome was that? Diabolical. Awesome things. So she also has soap. Do you know that? Her soap is also very pretty and super saturated style. So many talents, people. So anyway, this is a Superwash Cheviot wool. And I wanted to try this out. It's very affordable, by the way. It's almost scandalously affordable. Scandalous. $13. When I bought it, I don't know what it is now. It's future. Don't hold her to that. That's ridiculous. Don't be stupid. But I really wanted to... <laughs> I really wanted to try out this base. Because she's got one of the... Her colorway Sid Fishes. Sid... Vicious. Yes, not Sid Vicious, but Sid Vicious. I really dig. It's like orange and teely and super froggy monkey style, whatever. Um, but I really dig it. And I was like, oh, but you, it's it's never, it's, I should do, I never see it in the shop. Um, but you, you can always special order. She's got special orders up everywhere. She's crazy awesome. But I wanted to see what this base was like because I've never seen Super Wash Chevy it or touched it. Um, what do I think about it? I could wear it next to my skin, but I'm hardcore. So it's not Merino. It is not BFL. It is rougher than a BFL, but I think it's going to spin really nicely because it's got enough grab that it should be very easy to spin. Like, especially if you're a newer spinner and things get away from you or you have a super dragon face wheel like I do that pulls everything. Right? Why? It needs to be my pet. Um, so, yes, it is not super soft, but that's not anything to do with Diabolical and her awesome face. That's just because it's Chevy. I just have never used it, and I want to try it. does feel like it might be very really sturdy by the time. Totally dig. Right? It's like Mardi Gras in my own house. Shh. Who needs beads? Throw me some roving! Oh, my God. Right? You could just totally wear that. Oh, my gosh. I need my wool dreads so bad. <laughs> they wouldn't work with superwash. Um, so yeah, it's beautiful colors. And I'm very much looking forward to spinning it. And I like her packaging. It's very simple, but I dig it. Okay, really I'm out of control of people. But look at that! What? Does one eat what? It's beautiful. People <laughs> genius faces. I've got sheep mouth disease. So, then, I know, right? Don't worry. If you buy something from me, I'll totally spread the love. <laughs> I'll go buy some stuff from somebody else. This shop killed me. And I apologize. I don't remember. Somebody posted it somewhere. I think it might have been on somebody's, like, like a, a podcast, pimp your stuff kind of thread. I don't remember where I saw it. I should have taken notes. This shop, let me just say, not only does she have beautiful stuff, she's from the UK. And her name, her shop is called Nonoka. She wrote me a very nice little note. There's so many things that are right about her shop. <laughs> when I look, now I don't know how she maintains this or if she does maintain it. Maybe I just got it on like the right alignment of Jupiter in the seventh house of Awesome Sauce. But when I looked at her shop, it's on Etsy, so I don't know how she did it. But her products are grouped like into a color family. It's not blatant. It's not like she's like, these are colors A through Z or something. Like it's just like all these beautiful watery colors together. And then there's all these beautiful like flamey colors together. And there's all these beautiful neutrals together. And then like these pearly colors. And they're all they're all different things. Like there's bats and then there's roving and then there's something else like i think she's got like silk whatever there's all sorts of craziness going on but it's gorgeous so i don't know how she does it but it's beautiful and immediately money just bled out of my eyes <laughs> which i really try not to do but sometimes you just can't help it <laughs> so this is the first thing i got and this is like i wish she pictures these in like this beautiful wooden bowl which i don't have a wooden bowl i'm sorry but it's 100 grams total this is the colorway rock pool and there are three, six, there are 10. So there's 10 grams at each one. And they're just this beautiful color family. There is like an earth tone one. There's a, I think there's like a jewel tone one. Look at this. 
and they're just like little bits of roving, 10 ounces a piece. But of course I bought two thinking that I would, it's my thought at this point, is that I will spin all one sequence and then go back and spin the other sequence and then ply them together and then make a beautiful shawl out of them. A beautiful tide pooly, rocky, wet stones of the winter midwestern beat. Oh my god, she got me! Look at it. <gasps> These are not usually my colors at all. They're very fancy. So I got two of those. And she's very affordable too. Like I am extravagant by non-knitter standards, but not by knitter standards. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I got two of them. <gasps> so of course, I need a wood bowl, like now. Um, they were very affordable. The she ships from the UK, and yeah, everything I bought was less than fifty dollars. I mean, total. I don't usually tell you how much things cost, or maybe I do. I don't know, but it feels weird. But I just want you to know, like. This is like, I would look at that and be like, I could never, ever, ever buy that. And that was very affordable, the roving packs. I think, please don't quote me. I think those were only like 12. Maybe they were like 11. And now I don't know if that was British or US. They were very affordable. <laughs> this was a bat, so it's a little bit more expensive like per ounce because hi, it's much more labor intensive. This is the Tree Spirit 100 gram 21 micron merino wool trilobal nylon Angelina Tussa silk. This is totally not my colorway at all. But again, her grouping got me. Like, not at all. I don't buy bats because, again, I'm cheap. Holy cursed word face. And they're wrapped in a little ribbon for extra fancy sausageness. I smell nice. See, again, totally not my colors at all. And I'm not unwrapping them because, hi, wood bowl number seven. But look at that. Not my palette. Gorgeous. And then she sent me goodies. Oh my gosh, right? I have so much wool in my mouth. It's not even funny. <laughs> Look at these minis. Are you ready to be jealous? Are you ready? Yeah, I told you she had other color groupings. She said you minis of them. I don't know if she does this for everybody or if it was just like a random, like I'm feeling super generous and the world is a beautiful place day. So I'm not saying you're gonna get the minis. Awesome for these minis. So this is the crunchy leaves color grouping. And these, again, these are just like those ones I showed you. It's just the minis. It's the sample. Who does that? <laughs> and then this is the Sunday color sampling, which is all pastel y style. Oh, finally got the fiber on that. So there she is. And then she sent a bat sample, Woodland Whimsy. What? It's like a bat. Oh, she has bat droppings. I bet this is what it is. That's exactly what it is. She sells bat droppings, which are just like little nuggets of randomness. I bet that's what this is. Ah. So anyway, basically, shh, there's too much awesome stuff in the world. There's no problems. Anyway, that's all. Oh my gosh, it's 45 minutes long. I'm so sorry. And I hope you have a lovely week. Think about that whole snowdrift thing about the vegetable shortening. It'll continue to blow your mind every time you're at the grocery store and there's like the 100, 100 calorie pack of something and it's like $9. You'll be like, whoa, we've changed in 100 years. Okay. So anyway, have you a lovely week. And I'll see you next time. Bye.